One, two, one, two, three, four. Almost a weekend and you don't know what to do. Or you just need something fun to listen to. Southside Pod! Yes, we're on the South air. Side pod. And the gang's all here, all things on the South Side. We're listening to the South Side Pod. Looking for the best South Side breweries. Or you might just need an awesome place to eat. Southside Pod! Greenwood Evergreen. Southside Blue pod. Island Beverly. Pay listen, all sub to. You're tuned in to the Southside Pod. Oak Lawn Midlothian, Oak Fort Chicago Ridge, Flossmore and Bridgeview, you're listening to Southside Pod! So I watched an old movie for my kid that doesn't feel old to me, but it is an old movie. I watched Van Wilder with Ryan Reynolds the other day. That is, is a shockingly what, old what, movie. What year? 2000? Two th- I want to say it's 2002 it comes 2002? Because I had to look it up. Okay, yeah, let's go two, relook it up. National Lampoon's Van Wilder. Van Wilder. Now, this is one of Ryan Reynolds' first movies. After that, he was on that TV show. I, right? I, I remember two seeing guys, it. a girl, and a pizza, This is before and Tara Reed re- ruined herself with plastic right. surgery, but she was maybe starting on it. I decided. Eh, yeah, there was there were some there were some additions. Two thousand two. There were some right. changes. There were from, some changes, but it hadn't gone bad yet. So some some changes from the American Pie movie. Yeah, this is probably yeah. the last time she's hot. In a movie, okay. not the last time Ryan Reynolds is on him. No, and and, and no, it, he's still hot. And Ooh. what's funny is that Ryan Reynolds still does the exact same shtick with the exact same delivery of of all of his. I mean, honestly, if it pays it the bills, the, why would you change right. it? It could be the Deadpool prequel. Right. I mean, it could be the Deadpool prequel. It really could. It be. really could. Be. It, it, the way that he talks it and everything else like that. Like Deadpool is really Van Wilder, and my kid picked up on it. You know, he's watching the thing. He's 15 years old, and he's laughing at this thing, and he's also like. He's also amazed though at the stuff they get away with in that movie. Oh, okay. there's a, there's a lot of things. He's like, how do how do you like, not get wow. canceled for saying that? Like, well, he's like, he's so aware. It was twenty years ago. He's right. so aware of what he can't say now, and but then he laughs his butt off at those movies because in the end, you can sit there and tell his generation that they can't say something or do something. Still, they still find it. Yeah, fun. of course they do. Well, they still find the same joke. You funny. can't get the joke out of there. You can sit there and say that's inappropriate. And they'll be like, "All right, I'm in public. I have to act this way." But you're it's never going to take it out fun. of somebody, and that's yeah. what I noticed. Well, you go back and like watch like the old Friars Club roast, the the, the Dean Martin watch roast. Any okay. any comedian ever? Well, I, but I'm saying like go back to that era, okay? Where Don Rickles, Don Genius. Rickles, Don Rickles would say things about people, about their ethnicity, about their looks, about their religion, anything. Like nothing was untouched by that man. There is no way anybody coming up right now could be. Don Rickles ever again because there's no way they they get that far. There's a reason why the weekend update thing, where they write the jokes for each other. Well, where Michael Che writes the great, jokes for Colin Jones. It's the yeah. funniest thing on yeah. that show, right? Oh, yeah, right. Because it's the one way that they're able to get away. Yeah. With those kind of jokes, because yep. you're not allowed to make them anymore. Yep. Right. 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 It's it's and so they get bit. away with it, and that's what makes it really funny because it's like, well, Michael Che wrote the joke. Yeah. And he's trying to he's trying to embarrass Colin Jost. But in real, they both know. Well, of course, and they both know. I they bet you half of those. I bet you half laugh. of those jokes. I bet you half of those jokes. Colin Joe's comes up. Oh, with completely makes Michael Che laugh. And then as, as soon as Che laughs, he's like, "All right, we're putting." All right, we're put, like I, you know, that Colin Jost helps him come up with those. Jokes. Of course, yeah. Right. They got a room full of writers on that show. Yeah, doing well, it, it, yeah, and and they're <laughs> and the two of them are writing. They they know exactly what it is they're doing. They know the roles they're going to play. I mean, any good comedic duo or any good comedian knows exactly what they want to get out of the audience, right? Right. But it, it's just now you're right. It, somebody who is. You know your son's age. If he's thinking about going into comedy, he's got to be way more no, he's not concerned go into about comedy. it. I, I think it's I've, more. I think it's more than. Don't he take would. this the wrong way. I met your son. Not he's funny. a nice kid. Not funny. Not funny. <laughs> he's not funny. He's just not, not that funny. funny. You know what? He's he's funny to me. Like that's the thing. He's funny to me, but I think he's not funny yeah. to anybody Does he else make because you laugh? he doesnn't talk. To oh, him. Like he he's very to he's shy around other people. Right. Right. Okay. Now I know that his teammates when he was on the hockey team used to say that he was a funny kid. Like when he gets to know people, he's a funny kid. And that's kind of how I was. Like before I got into radio, I was I was shy. I didn't talk to anybody, and like the people who knew what? me, I don't believe that. So I was a nerd, man. You stayed one after you got into radio, too. Yeah, but, it, but, but the, yeah, but I mean, but then like, you would talk to people. I would go talk to people. Is right, what I would you were do. a confident. Nerd. I was a very very quiet guy. I think the first couple of dates that I ever went on, the girl asked me, like wow. I didn't I didn't know what I was doing. 
I was totally I mean, you probably still don't. But no, I really don't. I mean, like that's the funny thing. Like that I can make, part, that part that you not knowing that I believe. I can make jokes oh, about how like I'm gonna go out into the world now that I'm gonna be single. The reality but, is he's gonna he's gonna be standing in a corner. Well, looking, dude, uh, I hope I get to go on a double date with you and. First girl you're going out with, I think you want to go see it. It'll what, be great. Here's what I, even, I even if he doesn't invite you on a double date, we just need to find out where he's going, and we just need to be there. No, what I want to actually do is Off I to want. The side. I want. I what I would love to do, and I know I can't get. I don't know how I would work this out. Maybe I could find a girl that would just get a kick out of the idea of what I would what I was trying to accomplish. But what I would love to do is bring like like a really young like like a twenty year old like a 22 year old or something on a double date with you and your wife, just to look at the look of on your yeah. wife's face. Right. Can you like, cause you're going to have to listen to it for the rest of the night. Like I'm going to no, walk out I the mean, door. She's at the point now where she is going to be yelling right at you. Away. Is that what you want? Is that what you, mm-hmm. want? Is that what you <laughs> want? You want something young like that? You want something young like that? That defies <laughs> gravity. Is that what you want? Like, that's what I want to do. I want to, yeah, I want to make, I want to make Mike's drive home miserable when I double date with his wife and him. The only way Mike gets through that double date is if his eyes are dilated about an hour before you get there and you can't see anything right. anyway. Because the thing is, like, she's going to be like, you looked at him lo- her long enough. Huh? Huh? Did you even notice I was at the table? Like, that's what I want. I want to. That's the kind of double date. Even if it's just. Even so if somehow Chris wants to date a woman just to get you in yeah, trouble. I was going right. to say, I, I don't understand this, Chris. This is, this is getting back to does he know what he's doing with women? No, I don't know no, what I'm no. doing with women. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing with women. But, but he knows I how know, to get you in trouble. I, here's the funny thing. But, but you want to ruin it for me. I Thanks, wanna, buddy. I, more, more so, I just want to look at the, I want to see the look on your wife's face. You realize like, at this I, point, I love she'll just say something right there. I love your wife. I think she's she'll wonderful. Just say but I right know there. her, and I think that that would just be something. She'll just look at you and be like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you wasting my time with this? Is what she'll say. <laughs> with probably with the woman right there, yeah, right? right? Oh, yeah, yeah she, totally. She then she'd look at her and she'd be like, "Why are you with this old man?" Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what was the rabbit's name in Bambi? It was Thumper. What's this called in radio speak? It's called a bumper. It's a bumper. Southside Pod proudly brought to you by Family Waterproofing Solutions. You heard the ad at the beginning of the show. Multiple years in a row, they continue to be named one of the Southland's best. And they also have express service. Go on their website. You know what you want. You see the cost right there. You don't need to get an estimate. It's right there in front of you. Make the order. Schedule on site immediately. Get quick service. Gutter cleaning is on there as one of the options. Now is the time. He may be past the time, to be honest with you. But, like, I'm one of those people that still needs to reach out to him. I'm going to do it right now. Well, maybe after the show's over. Everything from bowing walls to window wells, foundation and crack repair, keeping water out of the basement, protecting your foundation, your basement's best defense is at FamilyDry.com. If you're new to the show, uh, you may not realize that one voice is missing and there's another voice filling in. Our good buddy Bill, who normally sits at the end of the nine-foot homemade oak bar here in my basement on the south side, made lieutenant. He's a fireman. And I'm happy to announce that he sent us a picture the other day of him graduating, or at least some picture that they took after he made it through the academy. He's got his assignment. He's been promoted officially. Congrats to our good friend who's been on this show forever and will be back hopefully very soon because he's the funny and he knows it. Meanwhile, Ed is sitting down here from Socks in the Basement with Mike, who's always here. My name is Chris. Remember to subscribe anywhere podcasts can be found and always at southsidepod.com. Google Podcast is going away. So if you're using Google Podcast, you have to find a new podcast player before the end of the year because then your subscription is going away because Google's getting rid of their podcast. And that's fine because there's so many other places we're at. You can get the complete list at southsidepod.com. Here in the month of December, we are opening up the big old vault of songs that have been recorded down here in the basement. That's our holiday gift to you. And we'll get into everything going on this weekend on the South Side in just a few moments. So my dad got COVID. Your dad got first time? No, no. He's had it Seventh before. time. Who hasn't had it at this point, right? The guy, the, my one buddy who is the guy that by some miracle never had COVID finally got COVID. You know who hasn't had it yet? It's those people that are driving around in their cars with the windows up and mask on while they're driving by themselves. They yeah, probably haven't people, gotten no, it. No, actually, those people probably I think they got already it, have it, and, it, and that's why they're wearing the mask. Yeah. They're just driving along with their windows up. Nobody else in the car. They have invisible people in the car with them who may have COVID. With an N95 on their face. Yes. Right, right. exactly. Okay. Um, no, he, he got it, and he was all nervous about it. He was nervous Because of when it. he got it, when he got it a couple of... What the hell are those kids doing up there? 
Anyway, I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about I'm it. I'm not worried about it. We got kids upstairs that are just running all over the place. Not my house, not my kids. Yeah, I'm I really know. not you know, worried the, the, about there it. There are yeah. kids running from side. There are kids running from side to side above our heads right now. Yeah. You and can you probably just hear, hear this yeah. thumping going thump, thump, on. Thump, 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 right, thump. exactly. And those are the little kids. The older boys, okay, the teenagers, who are the technically high school in kids, charge, on a Saturday night are sitting in the bedroom playing chess. chess. Yeah. Well, what else are they supposed to do? They're just sitting in a bedroom playing chess. The younger kids are running through the house. I believe that they, like, one of them tried to pick the dog up and throw him over his shoulders. That sounds like my kid. I was like, knock that off. Yep. Right. But it's, it's a party upstairs. Anyway, dad gets COVID. <laughs> right. Back, 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 to, to, back, back to, to COVID. Yeah. Back to COVID. It's dad been so long since we talked about Dad gets COVID. And he's very nervous about it. And he, he goes to the doctor. And the doctor gives him another test. And he goes, yeah, you got COVID. He goes, oh, what do I do? Do I get like, is there like medicine now? I've been hearing that there's medicine that they give you and stuff like that. And the doctor goes, yeah, none of that stuff works. And he goes, what? He goes, none of that stuff works. And he goes, well, then what, what do I do? He goes, it's just like a cold. And he goes, what? He goes, it's really not a big deal anymore. And my father's like just amazed by this with the right. doctor. And he's like, well, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Do I have to do anything special? He's like, yeah, drink some liquids. You know, same thing you would do with any other virus. You yeah. know, you get a fever, you know. Take rest, for it. Don't go around licking people. Rest, yeah. stuff like that. When do I get to be around people again? It's like five days. He's like, all right, do I have to, don't you have to like wear a mask then for the next five? He's like, nah, nobody cares. Everybody's got it. This is the doctor. <laughs> right. And I, like, and I had to chuckle because I re- we all remember what it was like a few years ago, right? Can you imagine if I would have told that story just three years ago? It would have been pitchfork. Oh my ago. god! There would have been right before it even got out on the internet. Somehow people would have found out you told that story and been right. after you. Yeah, and then people would have said I made the story up with the doctor too. Right? right? Okay, that would have yeah. been like he's making that up. No doctor would say that. Dan calls me up. He's like amazed by this. And then there also be the people that are like, "You're our hero." Right. And I'm not a hero. I'm you just telling a, a story. No, you're yeah. just a man you're with a dad not a hero. who got a COVID man, and had a doctor yeah. with who didn't a dad really care in about his seventies <laughs> who had already had COVID once. And tested positive for COVID again and went to a doctor and a doctor had said, did you die the first time? No, you're going to be fine. Like, that's kind of like how he was treated. I mean, it is like, it's like wimpy COVID now. Right. It, it, is, already, it already killed all the people it could kill for the Well, I mean, like, and right away. Now, somebody's right. going to be mad at you for saying that. Yeah, that still, that's not true. Still people die from it. But people also die from the flu. One of the kids might have just died right now. I heard from a large thump else, above yeah. us. Like what, there, the, somebody just fell off a Body chair. It sounds like the, the, See, dog. the thing with kids people is when die you, all the time. When you hear the noise, it's when you stop hearing people the noise. Die every there's 30 day. seconds of no noise, and then there's a. That's when we should be. Worried. Oh my god! <laughs> what do we do? That's when you get worried. And I think it's the same thing for COVID. You stop right. hearing the coughing. You stop hearing the sniffling. Uh oh. Oh. Is he alive? What should we do? Right. Exactly. But yeah, I thought I just thought it was funny because he was amazed by it. He was like, "Is he, is he better?" Yeah, he's better. Okay. Was he's he ever better. bad? He said he lost his taste a little bit. Like he said he had he had soup one night and it tasted weird. It wasn't like his taste was gone. Just didn't taste. That could have been bad taste soup right. too, though. And yeah. then he was back and fine the next day. And I was like, all right. Sounds like the soup had COVID. Right. I mean, like that's the thing. Like, I mean, and then my mother, like, I, I talked to my mom and I was like, what are you doing? And I remember the first time they got it. I do. I remember the first time they got it. They lived in different parts of the house. Yeah. Oh, they man, both yeah. wore masks. My mother's like, "Yeah, I'm not doing any of that." I'm like, "Ma, don't you need to take care of yourself?" Eh. Like that's like that's the attitude. Now. Eh. Eh. eh we whatever. are not very vigilant anymore. Right. Exactly. Not at all. Yeah. Not vigilant. We've lost our vigilance. It's, it's amazing. Stay vigilant, people. It's amazing. I will tell you this. I believe that, like, at some point in my lifetime, again, there'll be an outbreak of something else, and it'll be worse than COVID. And people won't take it seriously at all. No. <laughs> right? I mean, like, people are going to be like, yeah, whatever. We, we had this one. I, I remember the first season of this. I did this before. Yeah, but this one's a little different, guys, because your skin actually falls off when you catch it. So ah, uh, skin. That's what they're trying to tell you. Skin. Skin grows back. Yeah, it grows back. Right. Yeah, skin. Who needs skin? Like your entire skin. Skin like guy who regrows right, every people three be telling, months. People be telling you like this one isn't that bad, and their eyes will be bleeding. Right. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a, not so bad. Yeah, not so bad. Not so bad. I think when you get to a certain point after a, after something that like holds like the public consciousness so long, right? Like COVID was like such a big deal, right? And when you look back now after it's over, 
Do you ever think about the thing that was the big story before the big story occurs? Like perfect example, on 9-11, actually on 9-10, the day before 9-11. Right. On 9-10, Gary Condit, who was, I believe, a state senator or somebody from the House of Representatives, was had to give an interview that night about the fact that Chandra Levy, his, his intern, had gone missing and people believed that he had murdered her. Right. Remember that's that? right. That's right. It was that was the biggest going on story in America. It was going on. I remember on 9-11, the morning of 9-11, I'm on morning radio. And all we're doing is talking about how unbelievable he was, how he seemed like, like I was convinced he had killed her. I was like, Gary kind of killed her. Like, I, I remember doing this. I remember we were like, we were like, yeah, he totally buried her, right? You're talking Gary Condit and then... And then the planes flew into the And then the, the planes, yeah. And nobody ever thought of Gary Condit again. I think they like found, Mike her, is over they there found her body like four or five years later, I think. And, and nobody, no, then, nobody cared. Like, nobody cared. Oh, that thing. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. Nobody cared. Remember? And like, Mike, you looked it up. I'm I can trying see to. You can't even find her. No. No, no, no. the whole thing's gone. The Gary Condit, Chandra Levy thing. It was the biggest story in America. So I kept thinking about like what was going on before COVID. Well, there's the Australian wildfires. I remember no, that. No, Zika virus. Zika, that's right. That, you see, because I'm going with something that was scaring the hell out of everybody. Zika, that, that's then, the one where, where what kids are being born without the mosquito, brains. So if yeah. you got bit by a mosquito, your child was going to come out with a misshapen head. Yeah. Remember that? Yes, yes, You were getting yes. a misshapen head from the Zika. And it was like all the Brazilian women were having kids with misshapen heads. And they had started to find Zika in Florida. And they were doing a thing where they were trying to genetically engineer a mosquito that would kill the other mosquitoes so that they wouldn't have Zika. And they were releasing this genetically engineered wait, mosquito. Wait, 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 into the, into the mosquito population Hang on in Florida. a second what? here. What? Did they make COVID mosquitoes? I don't know what they did, but remember, that was the story. But that was the story, and, yeah. And Zika was like the scariest thing. And you were like, you were, you were like, do I spray my kids with DEET? Where they could get cancer, but they won't get Zika? Like, that was the right. whole concern. And then COVID happened. I never heard about Zika again. No, I think Zika stopped existing. Right. It, like, I haven't seen one mission well, you know, baby <laughs> since. Honestly, there probably is something to that because people didn't go out for so long that I'm sure all those mosquitoes just died off yeah. of starvation. Yeah. COVID killed Zika. Yeah. COVID killed Zika. I mean, I didn't have a cold or a flu for like two years. I feel like, I feel true. like, I feel like. And now we're getting hit with a bad this winter. I feel like we should like teach like a history class, right? Yeah. The three of real, us? real history. Yeah. Like get in front of the kids and be like, kids, let me tell you about Gary Condit Jr. and Zika virus. I have a confession to make. It's true. And I'm guessing you have done the same thing. Put more time into thinking about what's for dinner than preparing for your retirement. But if you think your retirement needs deserve more attention, I agree with you. And I want to help you out. I've got a local, experienced, down-to-earth guy who's a friend of this show. He's got a get-to-know-you approach and do-the-right-thing values. And he's been around for over 20 years right here on the South Side. His name is Tom Walsh. He's located on the corner of 111th and Kedzie, and he's waiting for your call. In times of financial uncertainty, how can you stay on track? Call someone who's invested in your success. Reach out to Tom now, 773-779-0023, or pop in at the office right on 111th and Kedzie. Tell them we sent you. Edward Jones, making sense of investing, member SIPC. Can you catch COVID from farts? Yes. <laughs> Only if you eat them. <laughs> you were like, you were Dr. Fauci confident yes. in that answer, yes. so I believe it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say yes. Good. Somebody, I'm going to go so far as to say it is the number one spreader as of soon as, they, as soon as they can confirm this, it's going to change everything. We need to wear everything. masks on our butthole. <laughs> <laughs> masks on our buttholes. Masks on our buttholes. Yeah! Because farts can't spread COVID, we gotta wear masks on our buttholes. Or pants, one or the other. If you're not wearing pants, be sure to wear a mask on your your butthole. If you're not wearing pants, be sure to wear a mask on your butthole. 
No shoes, no shirt, no service, F that. Wear a mask on your butthole. <laughs> gotta be careful when people are farting. You gotta be careful when people let one rip. You gotta be careful of COVID-19, 20, 21, 22, whatever we're at right now. Not out your mouth, not on your hands. Butthole. Out your butthole! <laughs> Wear a mask and N95. Wear a mask, something to keep you alive. Not on your face. That's old school. That's that's COVID-19. We're talking about COVID-22. <laughs> Where real friends on the crown up your butt. It is mask time up in your butt hole. Dr. Fauci is going to come out on TV pretty soon. He's going to say, <laughs> America, we were wrong. We were wrong. We, we got to move the goalposts down. We did this wrong. Down south. We have new data. We have new data. <laughs> and it's not so much, you know, from a cough. <laughs> no. From your mouth. It's your butthole. It's your butthole. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to find out. We're gonna, breaking news in the Southside Pod. Breaking news. COVID-22. I can't wait to see all the floral butthole masks. It's going to be great. It's going to yeah. be great. It's going to be great. Cause you don't want to wear it on your mouth anymore. You don't want to wear it. Wear it. Oh, you wow! Some politicians just walk around pantsless now. Right. To prove a point. You can't mandate pants. You can't mandate pants. Who mandates pants? I don't know, but that's the next fight. But you that's know what you can mandate? 2022 masks. Where? Not on your mouth. Not on your mouth? No. What about over your nose? No. Where? On your mouth. <laughs> back, we spoke with a wonderful young lady about a program going on over at the University of Chicago. Their Institute for Population and Precision Health is partnering with the National Cancer Institute to launch the Connect for Cancer Prevention Study to help understand what causes cancer and how to prevent it. They need your help. They're looking for participants aged 40 to 65 with no history of cancer. Together, you, them, we can all make a change. Learn more at cancer.gov slash connect study and join the University of Chicago in this endeavor. I, I meet this guy through the podcast. Okay? okay. And, you know, I've talked to him a couple different times. Nice dude. And he mentions to me recently that he knows somebody else that I know. Yeah. And okay. the guy yeah, you, that you get that small world moment. Right, right, the small world moment. But the problem is the small world guy. I think is a total jerk. Like, I hate the guy. Oh, so the mutual, the, the, not the guy that right. told you that he knows the guy, but the guy he knows. The guy he know. knows that knows me, I just despise. Like, he's like, and, and, oh. and it's so funny. And he's like, he's like, oh, you know him? And I'm like, yeah, 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 I know him. He's like, oh, yeah, great guy. And I'm like, yeah, sure. Like, I mean, it's like you. Because well, what are you going to say in that moment? Like, oh, no, no. He's, he's a total a-hole. Oh, he's a well, the, well, the funny thing is you're, sit, you're sitting there and you're trying to figure it out. You're like, okay. I want to tell him that the guy's a jag. Like, I want to be like, yeah, that guy's a jag. You know, and here's a couple of examples of why he's a jag and why most people who know him think he's a jag. But you just met him recently. He drives a jag. And you think that he's a cool guy. And he mentioned he knew me. So you're like, ah, I'll just, I'll just throw him in there, right? Like, you almost, right. like, part of you wants to warn him that at some point you're going to regret this conversation where you told me what a great guy he was. Right. Or at some moment, you're worried that he's going to come back and be like, why didn't you tell me what an ass this dude is? Right. Or the outside possibility that after he starts hanging out with this guy, he becomes an ass. And then I got to well, stop talking and then, to him. And then, and then you got two of them. But there's never going to be. It a, does spread. Sometimes. There's never going to be a moment where I sit there and I go like, hey, you should bring him over to the bar next time. Like, right. I'm never doing no, that. That's never yeah. happening. Right. Exactly. You just like bite your tongue and just like 
Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah. So who's the guy yeah, that knows know both him. of us? <laughs> <laughs> it's now time for your Southside Pod Bulletin Board, brought to you by Spoke and Vine Wine Bar and Bottle Shop, northeast corner of 95th and Kedzie in Evergreen Park, a 21 and over establishment. They got the bar, they got the high top tables, they got the lounge area, they got the area where you can go and pick out wines you just tasted and purchase bottles to bring home. They got really good food and they're starting to do wine tasting events. Learn more at SpokenVineWines.com. This weekend, Blue Island has a lot going on. First off, Friday night, 8 p.m., Blue Island Beer Company, Lithium Nirvana Tribute performs in utero and more. In honor of the 30th anniversary of that album, this Nirvana tribute band will be playing the entire album, some Nirvana hits, some deep cuts. It's only a $10 cover over at 13357 Old Western Avenue. And then we have Christmas in Blue Island all weekend long. Saturday, the 2nd, free Christmas movies 1 to 4 p.m. over at the Public Library. Free train rides 2 to 5 p.m. over at Union and Western, sponsored by CN Railroad. The Kringle Mart is going on from 2 p.m. to 9 p.m. High and Western. There's pony rides, petting zoo, kitty rides. The tree lighting happening at 4 p.m. with a live performance from the Eisenhower Concert Choir. And then the big light parade happening at 5.30 p.m. kicking off at Western and Prairie. There's also free carriage rides in the evening, free pictures with Santa and Mrs. Claus kicking off at 6.30 p.m. Saturday is going to be a huge day in Blue Island. Not to be outdone, Evergreen Park is having their Dickens Festival as well at 97th and Homan. And looking forward to next weekend, just put it on your calendar. Also in Blue Island at Blue Island Beer Company, we got the Krampus Market or Krampus. I don't know how thick your Southside accent is. I don't know how you pronounce it. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Kicks off at noon, goes till 6 on Sunday, the 10th of December. This is one of the best markets that the Streets Arts Alliance puts on every year. Our good friend John Streets, who's been on the show before, it's Christmas with a twist. There's all kinds of cool stuff you can buy for the holidays. You can get your gifts done. I actually got a gift that my daughter picked up last year at this market for Christmas, and it was the best gift I got. Back to this weekend in Tinley Park on the first Friday night, John McDonough playing from 6 to 9 p.m. at Hailstorm Brewing Company. Out of the Loop will be playing the next night, Saturday night, from 6 to 9 p.m. as well. In Lamont on Saturday, kicking off at 6 p.m., going until 10, the 12 Tidings of Christmas Challenge. Move your way through downtown Lamont and win $500 in gift cards to local businesses. Get more details at lamontdowntown.com. Also on Saturday night, taking the stage at 9 p.m., it's the return of the Who Dat Dare Band over at the Thirsty Beaver, 5599 127th Street in Crestwood. Sunday Fun Day brought to you by SidSauce.net, small batch flavor packed sauces. The hot sauce that I keep here at the bar and I keep no other hot sauce here. They're constantly switching up the flavors, they're growing the peppers on the south side, and for most of you, you're getting it delivered to your door for free. See everything they have to offer at SidSauce.net. On Sunday, the 3rd, 11 a.m., Santa Brunch at Open Outcry Brewing Company. Pack up the kiddos and come over and see Santa at a kid-friendly, booze-filled brunch on Sunday, December the 3rd. They're going to have Christmas music and specialty cocktails and pictures with Mr. Claus. Reservations only. Table reservations are 25 bucks. Call the tap room 773-629-6055. Open Outcry Brewing over in Beverly. That is just one of the many things going on this weekend that's on the Southside Bulletin Board. If you have something for the Bulletin Board, hit us up at southsidepod.com. I have promised myself mainly because I don't need to win their affection over that I am not doing anything different for Christmas this year so for my see. kids. Right. Okay. But I would imagine these kids are cleaning up this year because they've got two parents. One's not in the house. One is in the house and it's going to be, I think they're going to get a ton of toys. Probably like well, a yeah. lot of toys. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Like the little guy knows how this works. Like the eight years already figured out how to, how to how to manipulate the situation like we do a visit with his mother and he asks for dessert every time 
because he knows it'll be bought for him by yeah, his mom. Smart. Like, I mean, he's yeah. he's cleaning up, right? Like, I think that my son is going to ask for a PS5, which he had been denied in previous years because we didn't have the money. Right. Because yeah, he knows that somebody will buy it for him. Right. Now, I've told him nothing changes on my head, big guy. That, you know, I, you know, I got nothing to prove here. Okay. Like I'm, you're getting, you're getting, you're probably getting less, right? Wait, he doesn't believe in Santa anymore. I bought gifts too. Oh, okay. Santa gives gifts and I buy gifts. But then again, he is 15. So the answer to your question is no, of course not. You goof. No, what about the youngest? He does. Right. But I mean, the older one I'm talking about now, he wants a PS5. Okay. Dad would never buy him one. I'm still not buying him one. Right. But right. he's got that idea in his head now. He's like, I bet you if I ask for it, I'll get it from someone. And, and, and come on. We Somebody's all know, gonna make we all me know happy. Santa doesn't doesn't produce goods like a, on, on the level of a PS5. Well, I mean, I got the original no, PlayStation we, from Santa. We just told the kids that Santa oh, shops really? at Target Really? I got it from Best Buy. <laughs> no, he's, Santa shops at Target. That's all. The wow. stuff he can't build himself. Right. I, I, I know how that works. That's why you can't get everything, because he buys it all. I thought it was that the His elves... His reindeer stay up. I thought it was that the elves... And go wait in line. ...stole the patents to these things and built oh, their own knockoffs. Oh, oh yeah. I, I think the North Pole is just a patent-free zone. They can right. do well, anything. China that does that. Well, yeah. Not well, the Oh, wow. Let's get political here, Michael. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's true, but wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. We're, okay. talking, we're talking Christmas lore, and you got to bring China into it. Santa Claus and the Communist. Okay, that's what's Santa happening. Santa and the commies, man. Santa yeah. is a communist? Is that what you just no, said? No, I said Santa and the Santa communists. Claus a communist? He did. I mean, he is. He has no. obviously got a working class. Comrade that... Claus. Comes <laughs> yeah, right Comrade down Claus. The, yeah, he <laughs> comes right down the chimney, right? Comes down there. Hello, comrade. He puts on a puts his little sickle and his hammer underneath the tree. Well, hey, we, you know what? This actually tracks. Okay, he's got a bunch of workers that only contribute back to the community. Right? They don't red. have individual. He wears uh, red. Wears red and. And he is definitely spying on everybody because he sees yeah. you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake, right? He's he definitely knows. not the secret police. He's got a list. He's been bad or good. He's got a list. He's, He's got, got a, a list. good list and a bad list. Yep. Right. He checks those lists. Oh, right. That's damn. exactly what he does. Twice. Santa is a communist. Damn it. It's the South Side. It's the South Side. It's the South Side pod. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning. Y'all come back now, here.